So I did something dumb. I do a lot of dumb things, and you probably will as well. I'm actually a little embarrassed about it, but it's a good, I think, educational thing, and this will turn out good for the, for the ex your experience, so to say, and also for mine. Um, I noticed back in what video was it? In video 35. I we implemented the plus equals and minus equals operators and just naturally by habit I thought well if we're doing an assignment operator and we're doing an assignment operator we may as well do an assignment operator well that's where I screwed up I shouldn't have just may as well write an assignment operator that was actually kind of stupid on my part and then I said well let's write a copy constructor and I, I didn't really have a need to write a copy constructor I was just in the mode of oh we got these and then we do this and if we do that then we do this which is true. Generally, if you write an assignment operator and or a copy constructor, then you write the other one. But in this case, since Vector2D is, it's, it's basically two floats. There's no pointers off to any other data. Uh, there's, there's nothing complex in here. It's two floats. It's almost a primitive, just like one float, but instead it's just two. Uh, the, the screw up is I shouldn't just write this just to write this. Let me tell you why. The compiler will generate a copy constructor and assignment f operator for us, unless we wish to define our own. So we can rely on the compiler to implement these for us. And since our class, there's nothing complex in here, I want to rely on the compiler to do that. That takes the amount of code that stares at me in the face while I'm working on code out of my face. I know the compiler does an excellent job. What it does is a shallow copy. Uh, again, refer, to the, refer you to the playlists for copy constructor and assignment in the C++ playlist, but but here we go. Uh, we have two floats, so say this is 4.7 and this is 3.14, and I want to assign that to another vector 2D instance. Well, that vector 2D instance is, is another two floats. So the compiler will literally just, both in both cases with copy constructor and assignment, it will literally copy these values directly over uh, for us. So we don't need to do it explicitly. So, this is a lot of extra work we didn't need to do, nor should we ever have to do it in the future for Vector2D. So, to trying to be a pro, I'm actually going to take these out. And again, we wrote unit tests for it, so the unit tests will catch whether we are having problems. So, let's go over here, and I'm just going to hit delete, and then we need to go to the INL file for Vector2D, and, and, oh, <laughs> Oh, it's right here. Okay. Here's the assignment operator. Don't need to do that. Here's the copy constructor. Don't need to do that. Build it. Build succeeded. Run it. And they all pass. So, we're good. Now, this kind of begs the question, Jamie. Uh, let, let's go look at vector 2D test. Do you really need... I mean, the compiler is not going to screw this up, the copy constructor, and nor is it going to screw up the assignment operator. So, do we really need to keep these tests? Is it necessary? Now, here's the debate. I put a lot of work into these tests. We made a whole video writing these tests. Should we keep them? I mean, we got them. Does it hurt to leave them in? Well, I don't know. Here, here, here's the pros. The pros is the pros are. If we leave them in and then we find out later we need to implement the copy constructor and the assignment operator, we already have the tests for it. We can add to these tests if we want to. But the cons are the compiler is going to implement this constructor. This code is unnecessary. It makes it look like we need to have this code, when in reality we don't because the compiler does a good job. Now, I'm going to make a gut call here. Vector2D, it's two floats, and it's always going to be two floats. There's never going to be any pointers or any shallow or deep copy issues. Go watch the videos on those if you need to in the C++ playlist. So I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to take it out. And one of the... I worked with this awesome programmer. He's an older gentleman. He since has moved on to other lives, if you would. And But he, he taught me something. He said, you know, code is a lot like a baby diaper. And sometimes baby when the babies when they poop their pants, they get real comfortable. They they like to have that code and they don't want to change their diaper. It's just like security blanket. And I know it's kind of weird thinking about it that way, but babies they don't like their diapers changed. Not all of them, but some of them don't because they got that nice warm kind of feeling right there. But the older gentleman his name is Del Hole, great guy. He said, "The code's still crap. Get rid of it. Don't be like a baby that's stuck to your diaper." So, 
sniff sniff I just parted with some code it's cleaning up my base my code base it's gonna make this nice let's run this just make sure our tests still pass which they will uh, we're good to go so there you go a little refactoring and it's gone